The 2023 season is well underway and the teams behind the top four look very competitive. From one week to another, the teams fight it out for some coveted spots in Q3 and then some critical lower points at the end of each Grand Prix. This means that the teammate battles are even more important this year. The cars are so close together that the drivers can make a significant difference when it comes to the performance of the teams. But there is one driver that has significantly underperformed so far in 2023 and is most at risk of losing his seat this year. So who are they and what could happen next? Let's have a look. My name's Andy and this is Behind the Drive. Big Expectations for a Rookie Nick De Vries entered the 2023 season with a huge weight on his shoulders. Helmut Marko commented as early as October last year to say that he believed the Dutch Formula E world champion would become the lead driver in the AlphaTauri team over Yuki Tsunoda, who would be entering his third season with them. Last season, I made a video talking about the best driver on the grid to not have an F1 seat. In that video, it was Nick De Vries that most of the teams were after and the driver that was incredibly talented but was never given an opportunity to get onto the grid through his motorsport career. The 28-year-old driver has won two championships, which are both good indicators that a driver will succeed in F1. Back in 2019, De Vries won the F2 title. Admittedly, this win came at his third attempt, and he was behind some other talented drivers that came through during 2018. But regardless, the Dutch driver did manage to win the coveted F2 title, which tends to be a good indicator of drivers that will succeed on the F1 grid. But at the same time, this was four years ago. Since then, De Vries has continued to find success in motorsport. Moving to FE after his successful F2 campaign, De Vries would find himself racing against several drivers that had competed in Formula 1 before. This would be a strong test in a single-seater category which would keep at least some connections to the F1 teams. De Vries decided to join the Mercedes EQ team, which was an excellent choice as the team was obviously highly successful in Formula 1 at the time and would become a strong force to be reckoned with in Formula E as well. De Vries won the FE World Championship in 2020-2021, which was a highly competitive season. The Dutchman beat several former F1 drivers on the way to the title, including Stoffel van Dorn, who was his Mercedes EQ teammate. So within two years of leaving the F2 grid and failing to get himself onto the F1 grid, De Vries had added another championship to his list of titles, and this put him in a good position to be a trusted figure for F1 teams and a realistic consideration for an F1 seat. The importance of trust in a team's F1 drivers has increased in the last two years. Since the budget cap introduction in 2021, the teams have to limit the amount of crash damage they sustain, as this has a direct impact on the amount of car development that the teams can afford to make each year. For me, this is why we've seen teams like Haas go from a young driver pairing towards older, more experienced and trustworthy driver lineups. As such, a 28-year-old joining the F1 grid for the first time, who has significant experience in multiple categories, might well have more appeal than he would have done before the budget cap introduction. Though, with age comes expectation and pressure on the driver's shoulders. This pressure was boosted by De Vries's excellent substitute performance for Williams at Monza in 2022. This last-minute stand-in performance was exceptional as De Vries took one of the worst cars on the grid to 13th in qualifying, which became 8th on the grid. He followed this good result up by holding on to finish 9th in the Grand Prix. To take two points on his F1 debut in a Williams car was impressive, and it was perhaps the biggest factor that resulted in him having big expectations on his shoulders. Making the decision to join Alpha Tauri for 2023, De Vries would be making his way onto the F1 grid but it's quite easy to see in hindsight that this was an interesting move. At the age of 28, De Vries would need to hit the ground running in this environment. The second Red Bull setup has been notoriously ruthless in the past, as the team often have a regular flow of junior drivers ready to prove themselves in the team and try to graduate into a Red Bull seat. But as it turns out, De Vries is finding himself under threat from a driver that is actually older than him. A troubled 2023 season so far. Now we are just five races into the 2023 season at the time of recording, but already there's a theme emerging in the AlphaTauri setup. Yuki Tsunoda has finished 10th or 11th in every Grand Prix so far and has done an excellent job in what seems to be a tricky car to drive. While the Japanese driver has been consistent, De Vries has been the opposite. The Dutch driver has had a best finish of 14th and while he has shown moments of brilliance on the whole, he's failed to live up to the expectations he had coming into the year. Not only this, but De Vries has been prone to mistakes as well, and has been involved in several incidents. 
In Melbourne, he found himself in a clash with Logan Sargent, which admittedly was the American driver's responsibility. In Baku, he crashed on three separate occasions through the weekend, including an error hitting the inside wall, which took him out of the Grand Prix, and then in Miami, he ran into the back of Lando Norris going into Turn 1. These incidents haven't really helped his case, and the argument for older, more experienced drivers being less error-prone and better for incident damage costs seems to be incorrect in this instance. Having said this, we are a small way into the long 2023 season, and to be honest, we need to be seeing De Vries as a rookie. Whilst he has more experience than many other rookies and has driven many of these new style F1 cars, he will have had to make significant adjustments with his move to the Italian-based team in Alfa Tauri. The environment and personnel around him will be different, and this could have a big impact on his ability to compete each weekend. In addition, given how competitive this midfield is, it's very difficult to establish what is happening with the team. They either have an excellent car and Sonoda is performing as well as he's done previously, they might have an average midfield car and Sonoda is doing fairly well with De Vries struggling, or they have a poor car and De Vries is doing the best he can, while Sonoda has taken a real step forward in his ability. The recent reports, though, state that De Vries is under a significant amount of pressure already. Some reports have even said that he's been given the triple header from Imola to Spain to improve or risk losing his seat to Daniel Ricciardo. These rumours have been fuelled by the fact that the Australian driver, who has recently re-signed with Red Bull, has gone for a seat fitting at the factory this week. Ultimately, it isn't clear what Ricardo has been trying to achieve with his year out so far. He's returned to the familiar Red Bull environment, and it seems unlikely that he'll be given the opportunity to get back into the top team, at least not in the short term. So perhaps becoming the reserve driver for the only team on the grid which has four seats was a sensible option. However, given the driver ejected some other teams on the grid regarding 2023 drives, will he be happy to step into a 2023 Alpha Tauri car? For me, it would be a big step back, and one that he might not be too comfortable with. On the other hand, having had some time out of F1, he may already be itching to get back on the grid, as it's often very rare for drivers to be given second chances. This may mean it would be best for Ricardo's career to step into the seat if given the chance. What happens next? Nick De Vries is the most at-risk driver on the grid right now. The Daniel Ricciardo seat fit in Faenza has added fuel to the rumour mill that the Dutch driver may be dropped. However, Ricciardo isn't the only driver who may potentially be called upon to replace De Vries. Liam Lawson is the next Red Bull Junior who's ready for Formula 1. He finished third in the 2022 F2 Championship and is now racing in the Super Formula Championship. Lawson is just 21 years old and could be a more realistic long-term replacement for a driver like Sergio Perez at Red Bull. Giving the New Zealand driver some time to make his mark in the sport with Alfa Tauri could be a sensible option for the team. However, Lawson wasn't picked for the seat back in 2022. He was below De Vries in the pecking order when it came to making that decision, so it may be an interesting one if he was to come into the fold and take his seat. Ultimately, De Vries's future in Formula 1 seems to be in his own hands. He's shown glimpses of brilliance, and we can't forget that great performance in Monza last year. Given how competitive this midfield is, there is a chance that De Vries could perform well over the next few races, and all of this rumour and his potential move could be forgotten. Personally, I believe De Vries still does deserve a seat on the F1 grid. Dropping him after eight races would be potentially short-sighted. It's been an unexpected learning curve for the Dutch driver so far in Formula 1, but at the end of the day, if that isn't the purpose of the AlphaTauri team, then what is? It's a test bed for new drivers and an environment where they should be able to fail fast and learn their skills to become better F1 drivers. For me, dropping him this soon then would be a mistake, and replacing him with Ricardo would potentially be another. We'll have to wait and see what Helmut Marco decides on this one though.